up to that time. And we're live. And we're live. Hello. Happy Saturday. Mm -hmm. How are you doing, Jason? Having a day. Yeah. Putting up trim down in the basement. <clears throat> putting a new muffler on the actor. Yeah. Getting a battery going for it. Uh, this is Whole Circle Studio Live. We're going to wait for a few more people to join us. It is just a minute afternoon here on the East Coast, uh, just outside New Haven, Connecticut, where we live and where my studio is. Uh, yeah. So we'll just keep waiting for a few minutes. If you could see us and you are logged into YouTube, you can chat in the chat box. If you're not logged in, sign up for a YouTube account. It's free. You can hit subscribe. It helps me out a lot if you subscribe. Once we hit a thousand subscribers, there's new features that we can be doing and fun things that we can be doing. Mm -hmm. You can go on the road with us once the pandemic quarantine stay at home orders That's is right. over we can take the phone around with us because hopefully we will not be home every single saturday but we can uh take the phone and do these lives so um hello everyone i think we'll get started yeah um just to introduce myself my name is sherry my business name is whole circle studio i am a designer a professional quilter a teacher i teach in person uh, and i also teach virtually online this is my husband jason who's the other part of whole circle studio and we're here live from my home well we're not in the home studio but we're in our home where my studio also is although no this is like my photo studio where we're in, um slash guest room <laughs> So uh, we are broadcasting live here uh, every Saturday at noon, giving you updates from the studio, quilting tips, things that we're working on, interesting things that we're seeing. Mm -hmm. uh, we love it if you are here and you are logged in to say hi, uh, and you could do that in the chat box. As always, if you have any questions, quilting or even not quilting related, put them in and we'll answer them. Or if there's a topic you'd like for us to chat about in a future Whole Circle Studio Live. Um, so this week, what have we been up to this week? You've been doing a lot of things around the house, but that's same not old, quilting related. Same, same old, same old for me around the house. Mm -hmm. Lots of projects. Mm -hmm. And it, having the ability to not commute, to work from home, gives me many more hours in the day. So I can. So yesterday I was up at 6.30 in the morning in the backyard filling in holes. Yeah, but that's so. not really quilting related. Mm -hmm. Although you're able to help me more with quilting mm -hmm. and whole circle studio which is awesome so let's see um ellen had mm -hmm. said hi missed having our quilt guild meeting quilt Inc. yes this week that i was scheduled for glad you're all safe yes so i was um so what i was supposed to be doing this week yeah this week was i was going to be just outside albany um with a really great quilt group called quilts inc teaching two classes live and giving a presentation and that did not happen. But the happy news is we rescheduled. I'll be there in 2021, which feels like September, the fall of 2021, which seems like forever, but I know it'll be mm -hmm. here before we know it. Um, so yeah, so I've been home. I'm home indefinitely until it's safe to travel. But the great news is, is I'm also starting to connect not only um, with quilters and teaching classes virtually, all that is on my website, those offerings, but I'm also starting to have conversations with guilds and shops about how I can bring my program uh, virtually to them. So if you're in a guild or shop and are interested in my presentations or workshops, give me an email. I'd love to talk with you. Um, Cause unfortunately I think it'll be not so safe to travel for a while. So Ellen, I am super looking forward to seeing you next fall, if not before then. Um, and Hey Lucas, and I'm assuming others from your family might be watching um, this weekend. What are we up to? It is mother's day. So happy mother's day to all your, your moms out there. Um, happy mother's day to our moms. Big shout out. I have a feeling they're probably watching. They might be. Maybe in the replay or the chat. So happy um, Mother's Day, Karen and Ellen. We love you. And we are going to do some, I think, well, we didn't tell you yet. Well, so surprise, we're going to be doing a drive-by <laughs> tomorrow. Oh, we're going to actually give you a, a live in-person instead of a video. So. Yeah, yeah. So, hey, Jenny, I see Jenny just um, uh, joined us. So, um hoping you could be part of the virtual QuiltCon teaching experience. So I did not apply to teach for QuiltCon 
in 2021. I taught there in 2020. I, te- I apply usually every other year, or every three years. Um, so I won't be a part of that teaching, but I am looking forward to being a part of that participating. So yeah, um, even as far out, the other big news this week, which QuiltCon, which is produced by the Modern Quilt Guild, um, every year holds an annual conference that's uh, held somewhere. It's an international conference. It's held in a U.S. city. Last year was in Austin. The previous year was in Nashville. It's in Pasadena and Savannah and all over. Um, so I taught at QuiltCon 2020 in Austin. That was the last time I taught live. Or sorry, that was the last time I taught in person. Um, so they just announced their big annual conference that is always in February. They have already decided to make that virtual because they're anticipating that it just may not be safe, probably won't be safe for people from all over the world to be convening in one place. But I know that they're going to do a spectacular job, um, and I am looking forward to participating in that virtually. Uh, but I'll be teaching in lots of other places, both live and in person this year and next. So um the other big thing that happened this week is Jason went above the garage Sorry, that was the other thing. and unveiled the quilt that is behind us. Some of you may be have been looking at, at that and wondering, um, that does not look like Sherry's style, and it certainly doesn't, no. but I have a huge appreciation for all quilts. So um, Jason found this uh, above our garage. We knew we yep. had it. Do yep. you want to talk a little bit about See, it? So I had to go up above the garage to put away some items. And mm-hmm. while I was up there, I thought, what, let's take some down, you know, try to clear some space, open the bin. And right on the top was this quilt. And we had been talking about this quilt mm-hmm. for a while because this was my baby quilt. And I used it from baby all the way up, probably through almost, probably middle school, I would bet. Um, and by that point, it was starting to get some holes. You can actually see. There are some pretty right. big holes. It, it so is, these holes were there even when you before we stored it above the, because oh, yeah. it was stored in it, plastic. I mean, there weren't any moths that got it in the No art. moths, no mice. This was just all use. Yeah, I mean, you could see use. these are pretty big. All, all use. It was a well-loved quilt. And uh, I had to ask my mom where it came from. And she sent me a text back. So this was a gift from um, my grandma Telford. And it was not made by her, but she had lots of friends that were quilters. And this was back in the uh, early 70s. So this is on your mom's side. On my mom's side. Yep. So not made by a family member, but given by a family member. And likely one of her friends made it. Uh, Mm -hmm. And it's... It's not quilted traditionally. It's hand tied in the middle of all these squares. Did you know that or and, did I have to tell you that earlier this week? Oh, no, no. I knew it was hand- <laughs> Well, I, when I took it out. Oh, okay. Now, I haven't seen this quilt in probably 20 years. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen this quilt. And I remember these hand ties distinctly growing up. I, yeah. I like get the little knot under my fingernail. And, and, and pick at it. And, and yeah. Yep. So... It's pretty so, good, probably a 60 by 60 almost. No, it's bigger than that. It's like a twin size. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, this is definitely bigger than 60 And the by back 60. is much worse than the front. Yeah, we can actually. It's all shredded. And they knew, someone knew I it had think. to be fixed because we have an extra piece of this fabric, Whew. which is flannel. Oh, you can't really me. see. It's, it's tough to see. It's tough to see. You could see all the batting yeah. in here. Um, so the front and the back, it all needs some TLC. So... I may try to tackle this. I'm thinking that I'm going to undo, I don't know. I'm going to undo the tying and undo the bind. Even the binding is all shredded. It needs a new backing. There's also a lot of squares that, that need to be repaired that are threadbare. So um, I may try to preserve this, Jason yeah. and your mom. Yeah. You guys are okay with what I do with it, right? Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I think the quality of the fabric, which isn't uncommon, is not fantastic. But I'm going to try to salvage what I can and maybe replace. So if there's going to be some shiny new fabric with yeah. the worn fabric. <laughs> and then I know Jason um, really loves the hand tied in this quilt. So yeah. I may teach myself how to hand tie a quilt. So and that would be by hand. So instead of, if you're not familiar with hand tying a quilt, and actually just backing up, if you're new to quilting, a quilt, uh, what defines a quilt is a top piece, a middle piece, and a back piece. So the top is what you see here. The middle would be batting. Um, and this batting is pretty thin and threadbare too. <laughs> It was definitely made with love, but I don't know. Back in the 70s, 
people kind of just use it. They still do, which there's nothing wrong with using what you have, but yeah. the problem is that doesn't last a while. And the back was a piece of flannel. So um, I'll take apart those three layers. The back is probably trash. Mm -hmm. The batting is trash. And the top I'll try to repair as best I can. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. And then instead of usually what I traditionally, what I do is when I quilt and the quilting is what holds all three of those layers together. I do it through a machine. Um, you could do it through a machine. You can hand quilt or you can hand tie, which is essentially just kind of putting a knot in the front and then a knot in the back and the knots hold it. The one problem with that is it's just not as secure and it probably shouldn't be machine washed with that. And so mm -hmm. you could see there's a knot. Basically, this was tied with a knot. I'm seeing some of the knots are missing. Those are probably ones you picked off as a kid. There's a <laughs> knot or a tie in the middle of each square and on each intersection. Um, so we'll see. This is going to be a long-term project. Yeah, this but isn't, we isn't going to happen next week. No, it's, it's not. So... Um, Lucas and Misa said that poor darling lurks worse off than some of my old books. Oh, yeah. yeah, so mm -hmm. that's from my friend, um, <laughs> friends Misa and Lucas. And just, my gosh, it was in, I think, January that we were over your house, Misa, looking at some of the quilts that your grandma made. And, um, yeah, this one is much worse, is much worse than much. all of the quilts you showed me. That Not bad, but just really, really worn. So we'll see if um, anyone's watch watching this that has restored a quilt before. Um, give me a shout out if you have any tips or tricks or let me know. Um, yeah. We'll see. But that'll be a fun in-between project to uh, work on. A little nerve wracking too. But I guess. Well, maybe if you fix it, I will learn how to hand tie and I will hand tie my quilt. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Interesting. Everyone he's on video mm -hmm. will take him up on that <laughs> offer. Um, anything else around this? So you remember this, you remember this quilt as a kid and using it, right? Oh yeah. As evidenced by the excessive wear. I, I used it a lot. My guess is you probably dragged it around the house and made forts with it and did all sorts of oh, things. Oh God, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and the dogs, because you guys had a lot of animals. We had right? dogs. The but dogs. The, uh, I mean, this quilt was on the floor, on the couches, on the bed. Mm -hmm. It was, like you said, dragged all over the house with forts. And yeah, it was... Well loved. Yeah, maybe many, we'll get some years. more stories from your mom tomorrow about the quilt in yeah. person. Maybe she'll be thinking of it. Maybe <laughs> Ellen, if you're watching this, I hope it brings back some memories for you. Um, yeah. So um, the other thing quilting related that I did, um, which a couple of people have already shared it with um, an online club class uh, on English paper piecing that I'm teaching. Um, so English paper piecing is a technique where you wrap fabric around a paper. So this is wrapped around the paper and then you kind of put the two pieces of fabric wrapped paper together and you do a whip stitch, sew them together. And then this is an example of something that I pieced together that might be another project or not. The paper's still in it. Once a shape is completely um, all the sides are sewn together. So once for this shape, I have this, 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 and this, I can then pop that paper out and I have a quilt top. Um, I have another example, Bell Live TV. Here's another example of the same size shape. These, um, I think are one and a half inches for each side. So it's in a one and a half inch hexagon. And you could see because this middle shape was already surrounded, I was able to pop the paper out. And so that might kind of grow. This is um, this block. It's sort of a very traditional motif, the, the layout. Um, I think it's called the grandmother's garden or grandmother's flower. I've heard it talked about. So I was just playing around with these a couple of weeks ago. Um, I also made another hexagon project, the same um, technique, English paper piecing by hand. And I turned it into this, which is uh, I made then made into a pillow. At first, I quilted it. Um, I take took the top, and you can see all that stitching. So that stitching, I kind of essentially made a little bit of a quilt top. You can see that stitching on the back, and then I turned it into a pillow case, and you could stick a pillow in there, an on with sort of an envelope pillow, and that was this. Thank you. It's beautiful. Thank you, Lucas and Misa. So um, 
Hexagons is a pretty common shape in English paper piecing. You can essentially do any shape. Um, I actually have done letters. I have a whole letters. Maybe we'll talk about it in the future that I design and I produce by hand. And again, I do most of my piecing on a machine, but I always like to have a hand project that I could be working on in front of the television. Mm -hmm. um, hand piecing definitely takes uh, more time, but again, it's more portable and there's other benefits to it. So I was working on these pexies last month, getting this all together. And in the class, someone is working on a project that has lots and lots of tiny pieces, or not lots, but there's a few tiny pieces. And she's like, how am I going to work on this? Because, you know, you have to take the fabric and wrap it around the paper. And there's a couple of different ways to attach that paper temporarily, the fabric temporarily to the paper. You can use a glue stick, or you can actually um, use thread to kind of hold it into place. Um, I'm a big fan of the glue stick. So she was looking for some tips and I'm like, you know, I'll, uh, it's, it's the same technique, but I was like, how small can I go? So these were, again, each side of these hexes is one and a half inches. Mm -hmm. So they do sell papers that are, wait for it, wait for it, quarter of an inch see my unmanicured nails there. And I was like, huh, what would happen? So I went ahead and I prepared just like, um, I just wanted to glue it onto the fabric. Thing. Yeah. Just like before I sewed these together, I had to wrap the fabric and I attach it with glue. Um, they're so small. They are, but they weren't that difficult to do. So you could see here, I started to cut out the fabric and here's one basted. You can see that's the front and that's the back. It's all wrapped around. And then you sew them together. I'll let you hold this one up. You can see our unmanicured hands. So here are some of the hexes that we did. So we'll, I'll start to maybe join them together. I don't know how big I'll make it. Um, I have seen people do things where they make a whole quilt out of these, it takes years and years and years. Um, so you could see my, through my basically test, I was like, well, it was actually just as easy to do it. It was just small. Um, each side only took two or three stitches to sew it together. Here, hold, hold, compare, compare, <laughs> compare the size to this. I mean, look at the, the hexes on this. Not quite one fits in. But anyways, it was a lot of fun. It went together very, very quickly on the couch in front of the TV, watching some trashy television. I think we were watching uh, Below Deck Sailing or Below Deck Sailing Edition. The middle one, I already took the paper out and I was able to get it out pretty easily. So again, I wanted to test it because someone asked me about it. Um, but it was also kind of a fun experiment. So I don't know if I'll continue with the hexes. Um, I've been kind of thinking about other things to do with tiny English paper piecing, but that's still percolating in my brain. All right. Anyways, you, it's you, been you fun. You just walked up to the living room one time and said, look at these tiny. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just as, Je so just as Jenny says, you're certified. <laughs> I I'm going to blame it on the pandemic, but Lucas says they're adorable and so did Ellen. So um, it was kind of fun to work on. So I have some photos of them, um, the ones that you saw here on my Instagram account, and we'll see where it goes. Um, it was kind of fun just to kind of a mindless thing to kind of work on. I have a couple of other big projects that I'm working on. If you're on my newsletter, um, and if you're not, you should be. Uh, you saw a preview of a new pattern that I'm going to be launching in two weeks. So we might we might talk more about that. Maybe we'll talk more about that next Saturday, next Saturday. on here. Mm -hmm. um, I have a couple of other things that I'm brewing up in the studio. Um, we're still trying to just keep it together with these stay-at-home orders. Uh, it's not a super creative time, but we're pushing through. Maybe you're feeling creative. I don't know. Are you feeling creative? You're feeling productive, I think. Oh, very. Yeah, I'm, I'm creative in different ways. I don't do the quilting. Well, but no, I do no, the, no. I, do I the... mean, at this, you know, you're always creative, but during this particular time, I mean, yeah, it's an up and down. Yeah, it's a little hard to say focused. I'd say you find that. Well, you have focus issues <laughs> all, the all the time, pandemic or not. Right. Do you find it's more difficult to stay? <laughs> 
focused now for you? I know for me, and I know I've heard from lots of other people. No, it's about the same for me. Because I, when I get into something, I just block out everything else in the world. So yeah. it's it's easy to get absorbed into a project. Yeah. So um, we are moving things forward. There's lots of new things going on. Um, this weekend, not only last week what I've been teaching in Albany, but this weekend, do you know what this weekend would have been? Oh, would this have been market? This would have been the mad rush to get ready for a quilt market. We would this have, coming week we would have been driving. We would down? have been driving on Wednesday. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I was <laughs> scheduled Whole Circle Studio, I, Jason, were scheduled to have a booth at the big business to business um, uh, trade show called Quilt Market. It uh, happens twice a year in the spring, um, once in the spring and once in the fall. And the spring edition was in Pittsburgh which yep. is within driving distance. The last time we did it, it was in Houston. And so we flew down there and shipped everything and took five suitcases <laughs> and shipped things. It was just really challenging to do when it's not within driving distance. So um, we had signed up for a booth, uh, pondered it la late last year and made the decision in January. Um, smash cut to no one really yeah. knowing what was going to happen. So um, for obvious reasons and um it would have been uh we would have needed to um it was canceled for this year but they are doing a virtual a virtual quote market that's open mm -hmm. um to shops and to other vendors so we're going to be uh filming a couple of videos for virtual quilt or one video and yep. editing for yep. quilt market so we're going to be busy with that but we would have been um we certainly would not be doing whole circle well, studio yeah, live yeah we life would, would be different Running around, right Jason now. would be building things. We'd be packing up things. We'd be doing all sorts of things. So um, life is just very different, and we're rolling with it as everyone else is. So um, I hope that you all out there are doing really well. If you have, uh, it's going to take me a while to do both this and to do more of this. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're watching the replay of this, if you have ever restored a quilt before, um, especially ones that has big holes in it. I have a kind of an idea and I've, I've read a little bit about it, but if you have any tips or tricks or you've done it before, please comment on the video or feel free to send me an email. I'd love to hear from you. Should we ask for fabric from the seventies to fill out, <laughs> fill out the pink polka dot? Well, that's not really fabric, but you can still find <laughs> prints like that. They're actually pretty. Um... Come on, you can't find, where's the little skiers? Oh, I'm sure they're over there. Oh. I'm sure you could. It might not be that exact skiers, but there's lots of novelty prints like that. <laughs> so um, I'm more about the sort of the technique if people have tips and tricks and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, like that I said, too. there's also a lot that of red bear pieces. But if you've ever restored a quilt and have tips and tricks or just want to share what you've restored, please get in touch either by email, sherry at bullcirclestudio.com or comment below on the video. Um, if you are into English paper piecing, and if you've ever done English paper piecing or tiny English paper piecing, comment below. I'd love to hear what you're working on. If you have questions for me about quilting or just about other things we've chatted about, let us know. Or if you have things, ideas for topics you'd like for us to talk about in a future Whole Circle Studio, comment below. Um, if you're watching this video and you are not subscribed, please subscribe. How do you subscribe? You click the subscribe button. You if also you, have to you... have a YouTube account, which is mm. totally free uh, or if you detail. have Gmail. So please get a YouTube account. It's free and hit subscribe. It definitely helps us um, and others that you're interested in. And you can get alerts when there's new videos. So, yeah, we um, so we're going to wrap up today. This was our Whole Circle Studio Live episode number four. Really? Yeah, number this four. Is four. This is four. I so this no, this is four. So <laughs> next week we'll be back same time, same place. Saturdays noon Eastern time, and have a great week. And I hope you do something fun. And hopefully happy that mother's involves day. sewing and quilting. And yes, happy Mother's Day. Bye. Bye.